Hi and welcome to this video, part two of a series of three in this video of the ultimate beginner's guide to digital painting. I'm going to teach you about all the tools necessary for you to start as a digital artist. We'll talk about brushes, erasers, layer, and much more. Now, if you didn't see part one, I'm gonna put a link of this in the description of this video, so you can go ahead and go watch it before you can watch this video. Now, let's jump right in. If you wanna follow along, you can download this document. I'm gonna put the link below this video, so you can follow along with me. And with this one, we're going to go through all the tools and techniques necessary for you to learn as a digital artist. One of the main difference between traditional media and digital painting is the use of layers to construct an image. Let's start with a quick overview of the essential function of the layer panel itself. At the bottom, you'll find next to the bin a little icon representing a layer, and when you'll click on it, you'll be able to create new layers. Now go ahead and create a few new layers to practice. Now select one of them and drag it, it into the bin to delete it. You can also, if you want to delete, Click on the top layer, then hold shift and click on the bottom layer to select every layer in between. And then you can press on the bin or you can simply hit delete on your keyboard to delete them all. So far, so good, right? Now let's have a closer look at the layers that are already there. You can see that they have been named background, pot and cactus. At the left of each layers, you can see that there's a small eye. You can click on it to mask the layer. And when you're going to click on it again, it will show the layer again. One major thing to understand is that the order of the layer stack is the order you'll see them on your canvas. For example, look at what happened if I place the background layer on top of the layer stack. Suddenly the background is in front of my cactus. This is really important to understand. So let me show it to you once again while I'm replacing them back in the right order. I'll click first on the pot layer and then I'll hold shift pressing the cactus layer, then I'll move both layers back on top of the background, and now the cactus is back in front. Perfect. So remember, the top layer will always be in front of your canvas. Now, let's try to move the cactus around. For that, I'm going to use the Move tool, which is the top tool in your tool panel. With the arrow tool selected, you'll have a few options at the top menu. With the auto selected activated, you'll be able to click any layer selected from your canvas area. Look, if I click on the cactus, it selects the cactus layer. If I click on the background, it selects the background layer. Although this could seem like the obvious choice, it makes selecting layers very complicated when our painting have more complex textures on them. Therefore, we won't use the auto select. So make sure the auto select is not clicked and that the drop down menu right by it says layers. From there, let me show you how to move each part of illustration. The first way is to select the layer first. So you'll click on the cactus layer, for example, and then I'll go over my canvas and move the cactus. I can click and drag from anywhere on the canvas as long as I have the right layer selected, only what's on this layer will move. This wouldn't be possible if I had the auto selected on, for example. But even with the auto select off, there is a possibility to select layers from the canvas area. If I wanted to move the pot, for example, instead of first selecting the pot layer in the layer stack, what I can do is activate temporarily the auto select by holding the command key or control key if you're on a PC. As you can see, I'm pressing back and forth the command key on my Mac and it's selecting the auto select briefly. This will give me the possibility to click any layers from the canvas area, like if I had the auto select on. Hold command click and select the pot. Hold command plus shift click will allow me to select more than one layer, like in this case, the pot and the cactus are selected. And now I can move them wherever I need them to be. One last bit of info about layers is that you can duplicate them by holding alt, clicking and dragging from the canvas area and from the layer stack. You can also press Command J or Control J if you're on PC to duplicate any layers you have selected. So go ahead and try to make a few copies, then select the new copies and drag them back into the bin. And if things get crazy and you want to go back, 
You can do Control Z or Command Z to undo previous action. You can also go over Window History to see the list of action you have been doing and click on the one you want to go back to. This could be a great use, especially in the next section where we'll talk about brushes and eraser. So keep it handy. Okay, let's talk about the brush tool. To select it, you can click this icon or you can use the shortcut, the letter B. If you start forgetting shortcut along the way, you can always have a look at the shortcut list available for download below this video. Brushes in digital painting are a lot more versatile than in traditional media. The brush tool can transform itself into thousands of different brush tips and each tip can be different medium like watercolor, oil or ink or also texture and stamps to help you create your ideas with more ease. You can create your own brushes but you can also install brushes from other artists. It's really a powerful tool. The brush tool is the main tool to paint digitally. Every software will have different brush tips for you to paint with and you can definitely have a ton of fun painting with them but having a limited list of brushes to use at first can help you understand the fundamental faster. If you are in Photoshop, you'll be able to download the set of brushes that I have prepared for you. You can install them by simply double clicking the document that I give you, the brush document, or you can go over the right icon here at the top of the brush panel and choose import brushes. They should appear at the bottom of all the brushes that are already there in your brush panel. We'll use these to create our first painting together. In the brush pack, you'll have a saffron brush, a hard edge brush, and an opaque brush. If you have any brushes that looks like these, you'll be able to follow. Go ahead and try the brushes. First, create a new layer, then select a color from the color panel and start painting. You can go ahead and try every brushes. Okay, I'm going to assume that you created a masterpiece like mine here and therefore I'm going to apologize in advance as I'm about to ask you to delete it with the eraser tool. You can find the eraser tool in the panel right here or press hit shortcut the letter E. Both the eraser and the brush tool are using the same brush tip. Therefore you can, with an eraser selected, choose a brush in the brush panel and start erasing with it. Try a few different eraser tip and see the results soft edge, art edge, and so on. With both the brush tool and the eraser tool, one very important shortcut is to learn how to resize the diameter of your brush. With the brush selected, you can hold Alt plus Control, hold Alt and right click if you're on a PC, and then you can click and drag sideways to change the size of your brush tip. So you can go ahead, try it, Alt, Control, click and slide from right to left. The same can be done with the eraser. If you have a US standard keyboard, you can also use the shortcut by default by pressing these two keys on your keyboard to increase and decrease your brush size. If for any reason the shortcut do not work for you, you can make a quick research online to see if the version of your Photoshop has different shortcut or you can create your new shortcut by going over Edit, Keyboard shortcuts. Make sure you're on the keyboard tab, then go over the drop down menu to choose tools and scroll down until you reach decrease brush size and increase brush size and give them new shortcuts that works for you. You can also change the size directly in the brush panel window right here. But using shortcut will help your workflow drastically, so give it a try and keep at it. A lot more can be teach about brushes, but I'm intentionally giving you the minimum so that you can feel not overwhelmed. I'll be covering more about brushes in more advanced tutorial, but for now, let's jump to colors and blending. When it comes to colors, I could talk about it for hours. It is one of the most complex subjects in the art world, but for the sake of this series, I'll be covering only the essential skills needed to complete the assignment. Let's start by painting two different colors on two different new layers. Very important, always use new layers. Try to always use new layers to paint anything. It's simply good practice and will help your workflow drastically. Then we will try to blend those two colors together in the hope of creating a smooth gradient in between. 
For this, you'll need to use a brush that has pressure sensitivity, meaning that you can control the transparency of your stroke by pressing soft or hard on your tablet. I should precise here that if you have a mouse at this stage, you won't be able to follow. To know more about tools needed, like tablets and software, you can click on this link right here where I talk about my best recommendation for tablets and software. If you have a tablet, then you can use the brushes that I give you as they are all pressure sensitive except for the opaque one. The opaque one is best used for the eraser. Now, with my two colors ready, I'll first pick the left color to start painting. To select on your canvas while you're using the brush tool a color, one of the most used shortcut is the Alt key. By holding Alt, it will switch from the brush tool to the color picker. So you simply have to click on the color on your canvas to pick them. This way you don't have to try to guess the color with the color panel. You can get the right color by clicking it directly on your canvas. So go ahead, hold Alt and click to pick the left color with your color picker while using the brush tool and start lightly applying that color on the right color. You'll see it's gonna create a new color. Then hold Alt to select that new color you just created and paint it in the middle of the two. If you look at the bottom of your tool panel, there is two little squares that are showing the colors you have selected. You can also see them, the same two squares at the left of the color panel. They represent the foreground and background colors. We will talk about them in future tutorials, but for now, just keep in mind that the color on top is the color you have selected. Now, I simply have to step and repeat as much as needed to create a smooth gradient in the between. Blending colors will become second nature to you. But for now, if you find it difficult to create smooth gradient, don't sweat it. You'll get better at it in no time. So go ahead and create a few more gradient before going further. And in the next video, we'll put everything we learned to practice with an awesome exercise. And that's it for this video, guys. Don't forget to download the files that comes with this mini series so you can follow along. You can also click the subscribe button to make sure to not miss any of my future tutorials. And from here, you can click on the video below me where you can go to the next part to this mini series and dig deeper into the subject of digital painting.